and worship your king. Worship our king today. By his stripes we are healed. By his nail pierced hands we're free. By his blood we're washed clean. Now we have the
Lift your voices, lift your hands. Let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah, Jesus. I worship you. I praise you. I bless you today, God. All power is in your name. You are the great I am. Haramakaya robo hosatai. Ila rabakaya ndai. Hato robo hosanda rabahai. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices to the Lord today. Hallelujah. 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 Death couldn't hold him. Nothing can stop him. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why don't you just lay your hand on somebody next to you? Let's pray one for another this morning. Lord, you know every need that is here today. You know every individual request this morning. I pray, touch them today. Meet their need this morning, whether it's physical or financial or spiritual today. Take power, take dominion, take authority this morning in the name of Jesus. 
devil, you're a liar and you're the father of all lies. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus and we proclaim the name that is above every other name. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in your name. There's power in your name. We declare it. We declare it. We declare it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your hands. Give God some praise this morning. Give God some thanks today. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my deliverance. Thank you for meeting to me today, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you believe God has met the need today, lift your hand and lift your voice and give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being my healer. Thank you for being my way maker. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He said, according to your faith, so be it unto you. Somebody clap their hands and give God praise. We praise Him for the victory. We praise Him for the victory today. Amen. Brother Hillard, if you come on up front this morning. Hallelujah. How many believe God's a healer? Amen. God's a healer. Daryl, come on up. You need a touch of the Lord. If you need special prayer this morning, make your way to the front. We're going to anoint those that need special prayer. Brother Cap, if you and Brother Silon. We're going to pray for all these this morning. Hallelujah. Reach your hand out. Let's pray. Come on, lift up your voice and give God the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're the healer. You're the way maker. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. If you believe he's a healer, shout amen. Come on, I said if you believe he's a healer, shout amen. Give him a clap offering of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. 
Sister Chanel is coming with our announcements. Praise the Lord, church. I said, praise the Lord, church. It feels good in this place this morning. And I love the Lord, and I'm so glad to see you all here on a Sunday. A special greeting, as always, to those watching online. We're so grateful to have you as part of this service. A couple of announcements for you. If any of these you missed, there are these pamphlets in the front that you can go and pick up. They have all of the details on them. But today, we are starting a new thing, our nursery care. So this is for children, infants to four years old. It'll take place in the kindergarten classroom. If you have a child that young, you have somebody who's now able to watch your child during service. So please see Brother Akil for details about that. Again, that's already begun today, so you can take your kids out there if you wish. Also on November 2nd, there is a breakfast at Cross Creek right here. So we're having our trip to Sight and Sound and also outlet shopping. We're going to have breakfast here at 6.30 in the morning, and then we'll be departing after that. So if you've signed up for that, please come, partake in breakfast, and be on time so that we can leave for our trip. Also, on November 10th, which is a Sunday, we are having Friend Day. So we have some special cards in the lobby for that. You can take up a couple, pass them out to your friends, to your family, anyone you can think of. We really want to pack this place out and have our friends experience the love of God. We are having a special speaker that day, um, Reverend Dave Henry. So again, pick up some cards if you'd like to be part of what God's doing here. Also, save the date, women. Ladies Conference is coming up. The theme is Abundant Joy. This event is taking place at Christian Life Center, also known as CLC. This will be Thursday, November 7th through Friday, November 8th. So if you would like to register, that's available online. The cost ranges from $30 to $70, and online registration ends November 3rd. Again, it ends November 3rd. There's an opportunity to pay at the door, but it's a little bit more, so please register online. And last but certainly not least, on Friday, this Friday at 7 p.m., we're having a paint get-together. Um, this is led by Sister Rosemary. We already had one. It was really, really fun. So bring any water-based supplies you may need and come out and have a great time. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Woo! All right. So I'm here to talk about children's ministry. Woo! So <clears throat> on October 31st, which is a Thursday night, which is Halloween night, we're having our fall family hoopla. Everyone say hoopla. Hoopla. All right. So we just encourage you guys, you know, make plans to be there. It will it'll start at 6 o'clock. Um, we're not having service that night. We're for government service and just making it a church event, family event. Uh, so invite neighbors, friends, those who don't celebrate Halloween because we don't celebrate Halloween. You know, this is a, this is a clean, fun, Holy Ghost filled alternative. I'll say it again. This is a clean, fun, Holy Ghost filled alternative. All right. And uh, we, we're going to need some help and a lot of candy. So. If you can help or bring candy, please, please come find me and let me know. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, second, as Sister Janelle mentioned, we are starting um, infants and toddler during service. So if you want to bring your infant and toddler to the kindergarten classroom, the five, six-year-old classroom, please do so. We want to we wanna meet you. We want to get to know you. And we want to get to know your kids. Amen. And, and don't forget about Sunday school at 10 a.m. I said, don't forget about Sunday school at 10 a.m. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to teach Sunday school. I'm excited to be with your kids. Uh, our Sunday school teachers are excited to be with your kids at 10 a.m. Bright eye and bushy tail. Amen. So just. Keep us in prayer as we, you know, get ready for our fall family festival. And if you're interested in helping in any way, shape, or form, for even for children's ministry or this, this family event, please come find me. Come hunt me down. Amen. Excited about Sunday school. 
Everybody ought to go to Sunday school. Amen. Praise God. And Brother Akil was our new children's ministry director, and Sister Maxine just retired. Amen. We thank her for all of her years of service. Amen. And the great job that she has done. Amen. Let's come out and support Sunday school. Amen. Praise God. We're privileged today to have Brother, now Brother, I may butcher your name, I hope I don't, Brother Silo, all the way from Northeast India. Amen. And he is the general superintendent of Northeast India. And we want him to come and just share a testimony with you this morning. God bless our brother. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Overton. <laughs> My greetings to you and to Sister Overton. And all the saints who are coming together today. My greetings to you all in the much less name of the Risen King, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Kappa, my friend, he told me that we are together normally more than uh, coming together from uh, different 25 corners of the earth here. Yeah. It is more than the day of the Pentecost. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I feel blessed to be here today. Yeah. I'm feeling blessed. I feel greatly honored because of the, because not of the hugeness of this building, not because of the vastness of this building, but because of the presence of God here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I come from Mizoram. You may never heard about Mizoram. It is one of the states of India. We are very, very close to Burma, where my dear pastor is planning to go there, that Burma. I do sincerely invite him to come to Aizol. God willing. His good friend brother Tsung is living there. Hallelujah. Last year he was visiting my area in Nagaland. He was giving a teaching in, in the Gamaliel Bible Institute. That's my jurisdiction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite you in Jesus' name to do often come in my area and do the work of God. Or what else you feel to do in my area. Thank you. Hallelujah. So Brother Kappa and all the brethren with him are all happy to work with your church. This uh, a living church. As a daughter church. Or what name you may call, I don't know. Uh, they are happy with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. So the UPC notice in the started in the year 1950. It is started by the American missionary by the name Reverend Elise Luther Sism. The, uh, the father of Harry Sism, brother Harry Sism. The work was started way back in 1950. Since then, we now reach 107,000 believers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have 845 local charts and 115 preaching points. Hallelujah. Uh, including 1,058 licensed ministers. Hallelujah. Last year, we were harvested more than 2,365 new souls to the granary of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have 1,832 Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. And new water baptism member is 2,271. Thanks to God alone. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We have started the churches in Burma, in Bhutan, in Nepal, in our surrounding area. 
even inside India, we started a church in Odisha. You may not know about Odisha. Odisha is a state where the, an Australian missionary by the name Graham Stein and two of his sons were burned down, with, uh, burned down alive. The Hindu fanatic, they bound down them. So, uh, at that place, we have st uh, started a strong church. Praise God. In their area, they have a big Hindu temple that is called Jagannath Temple. You may not believe that more than 5,000 Hindu priests doing their rituals every day. It is very dark. So, we need your prayer help. Focus to India. Hallelujah. Pray for India. Hallelujah. So, India is a base for so many religions. You may know about Buddhism. The religion Buddhism is uh, started in India. So, last year in the month of August, on 8th of August, in last year 2018, I was visited that uh, Bihar. The place where Buddha was born was called named as Bodh Gaya. So at that Bodh Gaya, we have new 1,450 new members there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, I to close up my greeting, oh, I, I would like to Read a Bible portion from Hebrew chapter 11 and Revelation chapter 2.10. Uh, let me go forward. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that all of you may be tried. And all of you shall have tribulation ten days. Be you faithful unto death. And I'll give you a crown of life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have to be faithful unto until death. Yeah. In the book of Daniel, we have seen many stories about Daniel and his friend. They have been tested. They have been tried. But they are faithful to their living God, to their risen God. Hallelujah. Even before the lions then, even before the fiery furnace, they never forfeit their king. They just uphold the name of their God. Hallelujah. So be faithful until then. Then the crown is for ours. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas, you know, in the book of Acts, they were imprisoned in the Philippian prison. But in the midnight, they still could sing. Hallelujah. Even torture, even whip, even uh, shock down all the days with no food, with no water. But still in the late midnight, they can still even sing to their living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That very night, a great earthquake was happening. All the door was unlocked. Immediately the tailor were saved and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us be faithful unto death and we will be crowned the crown of life. Hallelujah. That is faith. What? Hey. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Bless you all. In Jesus' name. Thank you, brother. Amen. What a wonderful testimony about what God is doing in Northeast India. Why don't we just lift our hands real quick and pray for them. Father, we pray for Northeast India that you would continue to pour out your blessings upon the nation. Hallelujah, that souls would be won to the kingdom, that your will would be done, that your word would go forth. Oh, Lord, take power, take dominion and authority. Bless our good brother this morning. Let the blessings of the Lord be upon him as he leads the country. I pray in the name of Jesus, not our will, but thine be done. In Jesus' name, clap your hands unto the Lord this morning. To God be the glory. 
receive our tithe and offering. The ushers are coming. As you're preparing to give, I just would quickly like to say, if you're new here, and we're happy to have all of our first-time guests. Amen. Clap your hands and greet our guests this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, if you're new, I'd like, we're asking that you fill out our connection card. Amen. You can either drop it in the offering plate or give it to us on your way out. It's our way of staying connected with you and letting you know what's going on at Cross Creek. Amen. And we also have a free gift for you on your way out as you leave the building today. Amen. Let us pray over the offering. You can march and come and give. Father, I thank you for your goodness and mercy unto us. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that we feel in this place today. I pray that you would bless every gift and every giver today. Let the glory of the Lord be upon your people. Let every need be met. We just say thank you, Lord, for all of your wonderful blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Come and give to the Lord. Anybody want to trade something in today? You don't have to go home the same way you came. The Lord wants you to lay it down. He said, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. 
Have your Bibles turned with us today to Matthew chapter 9. Amen. I want to read verse 35 and 36. And as you're turning there, amen, I just want to say again, Brother Silo, it's great to have you with us today. And one of these days, I'm going to get to your part of the country again. Amen. Thank you for the invitation. Amen. And I pray Brother Cap doesn't wear you out today. He's going to take him to three more services today. Now, many of you may not know it, but Brother Cap is our Asian ministry uh, director. Amen. And we have Miso Church every Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Amen. And then he also goes to Baltimore to another group and another group in Laurel. Amen. The reason he goes to the other groups is they don't all speak the same language. Amen. But in Jesus' name, we're going to get it all together. And I am happy to report that we are a cross-cultural, uh, multicultural church. Amen. We just had All Nation Sunday, and we had over 25 different nations represented in our church. So I give God the glory for that. Amen. Praise God. My title this morning is Moved. Moved. I want to be moved by the power of God. Amen. In Matthew chapter 9, the scripture says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. The Lord went and healed and preached to all the people. Verse 36, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Everybody say moved. moved. He was moved with compassion upon on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous. Can you turn me up a little bit? The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest field. Amen. He was moved with compassion because they had no shepherd. Amen. And he said the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, who is God, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. So as we open this morning, why don't we just ask God to do that today? Father, in the name of Jesus, we realize the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. So we ask you today, God, send forth laborers into the harvest field. Help us to hear the voice of God. Help us to hear the call of God. Help us to have the compassion that you had, Lord. Help us to be moved with your compassion. Help us to be moved with your spirit that we might go forth and do the work that you have called us to do. You said, hallelujah, the harvest is ripe. But the labors are few. We ask you today, God, bring conviction upon the saints of God. Bring conviction upon the people of God to go forth into the harvest field and to reap the harvest. For the harvest is ripe and it's ready to be reaped today. Move in us and move through us and let your will be accomplished, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus was moved with compassion. And of course, we as well need to be moved with the compassion for the lost like Jesus was moved. Can you say amen? amen. 
So since Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw the multitudes, and since we are to be like Christ, we should also be moved with the same compassion that Jesus had. Say amen. 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 If we have Jesus in us, if we are really born again apostolics, then we should have Jesus living on the inside of us. And if I have Jesus on the inside, there ought to be something in my heart that cannot be content to see my neighbor and to see my co-worker and to see my relatives go to hell without a hope in God because, hallelujah, amen, I am content just to have my own form of religion, if you will. Oh, God, break me out of the mold. Break me out of the box and help me. Oh God, hallelujah, to be moved with a compassion that I'll go and knock on my neighbor's door or I'll witness to that person that I'm working with or I'll go out of my way to help somebody that's in need. Amen. We've got to be moved. Amen. We cannot be content. Hello. I said we cannot be content just to show up on Sunday morning and to go through a ritual, if you will, amen, and have a little church service and go home and feel like we have fulfilled our duty to the Lord. God didn't save you to come to a church service. And God didn't save you, amen, just to save yourself. But God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And God gave you the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That you might be a witness. That you might be a witness. That you might be a witness. That you might touch somebody. That you might let the love of God flow through you and touch a sin sick world this world needs a touch of God this world needs an apostolic outpouring of the Holy Ghost there are people hungry for what you and I have amen hallelujah to be like Christ we must become moved With compassion. And we must, if we're really going to say, I'm a Christian, we must become involved in the work of the kingdom. I could have preached you a nice little sermon this morning. Get you all shouting. But now I'm calling upon the church to do something. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit is calling the church to do something. This is almost 2020. Jesus is coming back after a church that's made themselves ready. Not a beat up church, not a bunch of people just barely getting by, but he's coming back after a people who know their God, who have the power of the Holy Ghost down on the inside, that it's not just a figment of their imagination, but it is a reality, and there's a fire burning on the inside, a fire that cannot be quenched, a fire that has to tell somebody why, because we're like Jesus, and there's something on the inside that says, I've got to tell my neighbor, I've got to tell my co-worker, i got to tell grandma. Grandma, I gotta tell my son, I gotta tell my daughter. Hallelujah. About the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are millions who have not shared what you and I have this morning. Amen. They're in our parks, they're on our job. They're in our schools. They're at the grocery store. They're at the bank. They're living right next door to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's imperative that we become like Christ and become moved with compassion of Christ because we are concerned about their eternal destiny. 
What a tragic it would be to stand before God. Hello. And your neighbor say, why didn't you tell me about Jesus Christ? Or your own relative stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And he says, you never told me that there was a thing called repentance or water baptism or the infilling of the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Why? Because perhaps we think they are not interested, but there are catastrophes happening in their lives on a daily basis. They're having, amen, they're sick in their body. Amen, they're going through a divorce. Amen, their kids have left home. There's all kinds of situations and all kinds of circumstances, and they're looking for answers, and we have the answer today. It's not us. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can I sit idly by and say, I've already got my battle won. I'm going to heaven. No, God called you to be a witness to him in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. He said, hallelujah, let your light so shine before men that others might see him in you and give him the glory. Amen. Amen. There are souls waiting to be reaped. And Jesus said, don't look for the harvest, for the harvest is already there. Don't say, I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll wait till next week. I'll wait till next month. But he said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest field. You and I are the laborers of Christ today. We are his hands. We are his feet. And we are his voice today. I'll say it again. We are his hands, and we are his feet, and we are his voice today. Hallelujah. The harvest is ready. So the question is, how many times do we come to Sunday service, and we just come by ourselves? But God is willing that we would go into the highways, and we would go into the byways, and that we would begin to compel them to come in, that the house of God might be full. That is the will of God. That is the purpose of God. He came to seek and he came to save that which is lost. I can't be satisfied with just coming to church on Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and hearing the praise team sing and hearing the musicians play and patty caking for Jesus and hearing a sermon and going home the same way that I came. Oh, God, stir us. Oh, God, motivate us. Oh, God, captivate us. Let us get on fire with a burden from heaven that we might do the work and that we might do the will of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus, he called his 12 disciples and he didn't tell them don't do anything. But he he called them together, and he gave them marching orders. And he sent his 12 disciples out into the harvest field. Mark 16 and 15, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You don't have to stand behind a pulpit to preach the gospel. But you can preach it on your job. You can preach it at home. You can preach it at Walmart. You can preach it at the grocery store. You can preach it at the bank. You can preach it driving down the road. You can go to the park. You can go to the nursing home. You can go to the jail. You can go all kinds of places. But he said, 
may go forth and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What is the gospel? The death the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall, and ye shall, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Come on, clap your hands to him. Go into all the world. Everybody say go. Before you go, you got to be moved. (laughs) Most of you know I worked for Brother Haney for a little while. There was one song he said he hated. The old hymn that said, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. And some of us, we come to church and we're just like that. What are they all getting excited about? Why don't Sister Overton sit down and quit dancing with that baby? Amen. What are, I don't feel nothing. That's because you refuse to be moved. I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost is moving in this place. And the Holy Ghost is here in this house. And the power of God is here. And the anointing of God is here. But you got to get plugged in. I said, you got to get plugged in. He said, shout unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people. Amen. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him in spirit. And worship him in truth. Let the glory, let the glory go up. Praise is going up. Blessing coming down. Praise is going up. Power coming down. Praise is going up. Holy Ghost delivering power coming down. Hallelujah. That's why you can go to church. Half of the people are praising God. And the rest of them are sitting there like they're dead. I'll just tell you what. If Jesus can't resurrect you, I'm not going to try. You've heard me say it before. I wish I had a cattle prod. I'd like to walk down through the aisles and give some of you a little jolt. Let me just be real with you. There's something wrong with our Holy Ghost if I can't never get my hand in the air. I said, there's something wrong with the Holy Ghost if I can't get a dance every once in a while. Hallelujah. There's something wrong with our Holy Ghost if I can't clap unto the Lord and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. So first of all, we got to get the church revived and the church motivated and the church full of compassion for a lost and a dying world because if we don't feel the tug on our spirits to reach a harvest, we'll never reach them. But if we'll let the love of God be shed abroad in us and we become moved with the compassion of Jesus Christ, we won't be able to sit still until we fulfill the call and the command of Christ. Hallelujah. (laughs) Well, pastor, I'll pray about it. 
You got to be kidding me. I thank God for those of you that when I ask you to do something, you don't say, I'll pray about it. You say, okay, pastor, I'll do it. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you, there's just some stuff in the book you don't have to pray about. I'll say it again. There's just some stuff in the book you don't have to pray about. As long as it's in the book, you just need to do it. When he sent the disciples forth into the harvest field, he didn't, they didn't say, I'll pray about it. It is the will of God to win souls. I said, it is the will of God to win souls. It is the will of God for each and every one of us to be a witness and to be a lighthouse and to be a testimony that Jesus brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light and he graciously and mercifully filled us with the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Jesus appointed laborers and he sent them out into the field. And he is still appointing laborers today. And he has chosen you and I. I said he's chosen you and I. That we would go into the harvest fields. And fulfill the will of God and the purpose of God. He's appointed you to go. He's appointed me to go. And to reap a harvest. We are his body, we are his feet, we are his hands, and we are his voice. We are his body, and we are his feet, and we are his hands, and we are his voice. What would it be like if a fisherman that made his living by catching fish went to his bathtub to fish? They don't go to their bathroom to do their fishing, but they go to the streams and they go to the lakes and they go to the waterways so that they can catch some fish. They go out to where the fish are. Farmers don't plant crops in their dining rooms, but they got to go out to the field in the heat of the day. And they got to go out and they got to do some plowing. They got to do some planting before there's ever going to be a harvest. And the best place to win souls is not in the church. I said the best place to win a soul is not here. But we must take the message to the street. We must take the message to the jail. We must take the message to the nursing home. We must take the message from house to house. We've got to go where the people are. Hello? So Paul asked in Romans 10 and 14, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Amen. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear that there is love in God's house and there is mercy in God's house and there is deliverance in God's house and God's got something better for you than what you've been experienced, amen, if they don't have a preacher. Amen. Peter and John went up to the temple to pray. 
And he saw the lame man sitting there. And all he was doing was begging for some daily bread. But Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. And they laid hands on him, and he was healed instantly by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell somebody, God wants to move through you like that. God wants to move in you like that. God wants somebody to get so moved with the compassion of the Holy Ghost that you go to the hospital and you start laying hands on people. And people begin to get healed by, by the miraculous power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Clap your hands to him. <clears throat> Peter preached to the masses in the streets of Jerusalem. Philip preached to all the Samarians. Amen. Amen. That's when he encountered the Ethiopian eunuch, a man, on a trader's roadway. If you know that story, he didn't know what he was reading. Hallelujah. Amen. But Philip began to expand his knowledge and preach to him the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Paul convinced the philosophical Greeks that... At, on Mars Hill, amen, he preached to them the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If we want to reap a harvest in our generation, the street, amen, is read, we got to get out into the street. We got to get it out into the highways and the byways. We've got to develop a passion. We've got to develop a zeal. We've got to divert, develop a burden for the lost like the first church had. Hallelujah. Amen. The believers weren't content to keep it to themselves, but they went out into the streets. They went into the cities. They went into the villages, and they constantly pursued after the lost souls of their day. Oh, church. How can we sit idly by and patty cake on a Sunday morning and be content that we've done all? Some of you are asking God, what can I do in the kingdom? Here's the answer. Go tell somebody that Jesus Christ is alive. Go tell somebody that Jesus died on an old rugged cross that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. Go tell somebody that's about to experience a divorce that God God can put your marriage together. That God can save your dopatic son. That God can heal your drunken husband. That God can make a difference. Go tell somebody. Put your Christianity into action. Hallelujah. When Jesus went, he met a man in Mark chapter 5 that was full of devils. Amen. Amen. To the, I won't go into the story. You can read it for yourself in Mark 5. But he was full of the demons and he was full of devils. And Jesus cast the devils out of him. And then he said in Mark chapter 5, verse 19 and 20, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. Go home and tell thy friends the great things that the Lord hath done for thee. Hallelujah. And hath had compassion on thee. The Lord has had compassion on thee. We are sitting in the house of God today. And we are only here because the Lord has had compassion on us. Hallelujah. So he is giving us the same command. Go. Go. Go tell your neighbor. Go tell your co-worker. Go tell your friends what God has done for you. Clap your hands to him. Verse 20 says, 
And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. All men did marvel. If you look up the city, Decapolis, Decapolis was a 10 city region. Amen. So in essence, what Jesus was telling him, Jesus sent him to 10 cities to tell everyone how God had delivered him. I said, Jesus sent him into 10 cities to tell everyone what God had done for him. I hear, I want to provoke your thinking. God is telling us, go to Beltsville, go to Laurel, go to Silver Spring, go to Bowie, go to Greenbelt, go to Tacoma Park, go to College Park, go to Odenton, go to Fort Meade, go to Columbia, go to Ellicott City, go to every city in a, in your ta- in your radius and tell them and tell them and tell them how good your God is that you serve a miraculous serving God that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that they think or ask clap your hands to him again Go to the supermarket. Go to Walmart. Go to the bank. Go to the nursing home. Go to the schools. Go to the library. Go to homes that live in your neighborhood. Go to people. There is people everywhere. Go tell somebody how great your God is. Can you say it? Whoever is supposed to be the usher back there needs to keep them doors from clanging. Amen. So when you witness, when when we fulfill the commands of Christ, it becomes a lifestyle of the believer. We need to develop a lifestyle of witnessing to people we don't know. Because when I begin to fulfill the command of Christ, I become a happy Christian. I said, I become a happy Christian because it's exciting to see that God is using you and God is using me in a miraculous way to win the loss. When I tell my story, I can't save them and you can't save them. But when we begin to talk about the goodness of the Lord and we begin to talk about the miraculous power of God, all of a sudden something begins to happen and their lives begin to take shape and they begin to hunger for what it is that we have. Amen. And as we share, our soul begins to get happy. Our soul begins to get satisfied satisfied our soul begins to say hey God's using me I feel the glory of God I feel the power of God and it's such a wonderful and marvelous feeling he gives us great excitement and it gives us great purpose when we reach out to others anybody Don't raise your hand. (laughs) I was going to say, anybody got a little depression in their life? Anybody feel a little lonely this morning? I got a great antidote for you. The Bible says if you want friends, make yourself friendly. Go out of your way to make some new friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Go out of your way to witness to somebody. Go out of your way to testify to somebody. Say, hey, I've got this 12-week Bible study called Search for Truth. I'd love to sit down at your kitchen table and share it with you. Hallelujah. And when you begin to teach the word of God and you begin to win a soul for the kingdom of God, there's a joy that comes into your heart. There's a peace that comes over you. Depression leaves. Amen. Loneliness is gone because God has just given you a new best friend. Amen. Somebody that's hungry and somebody that's thirsting for the power of the Lord in their lives. 
So he eliminates the depression. He eliminates the loneliness. He adds some enthusiasm and he adds some inspiration in your life because now you're fulfilling the call of God and now you're fulfilling the purpose of God. Amen. And when you and I fulfill the call and when you and I fulfill the purpose, there's just something that wells up on our in the, on the inside of our soul. I think it's called the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. I can make it through every trouble. I can make it through every trial. I can make it through every temptation because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Amen. God hasn't left me out here by myself. God is with me every step of the way. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. And when you get excited about winning souls, <laughs> I like to rejoice. <laughs> but when you get excited that God is using you in a new dimension, yeah. Yeah. Come on, come to yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I will shout unto the Lord. I will lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. My worship comes alive. My worship comes alive. My worship comes alive. Because I don't care what anybody thinks about me any longer. Me and God got something going on. Me and God have a thing. I've been talking to the master. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm giving you my best. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. My God's not dead. He's alive. I'm moved. I'm moved. I'm moved. I'm moved with the power of God. I'm moved with the compassion of God. I'm moved by the Spirit of God. Yeah. And before you know it, you found a new purpose in life. Your purpose isn't to make money. But your purpose is to fulfill the God-given call that he's placed in every one of your lives. Hallelujah. Your purpose is fulfilled when we submit to the call of God. Yes, I'm saying that this morning. I'm saying God has called you. God has called you and I out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he is graciously, graces. Sorry, I'm getting all tongue tied. But he has filled us with his power and he has filled us with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And as we've been studying in the book of Romans, amen, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus because I don't walk after the flesh any longer, but I'm walking after the power of God. I'm walking after the anointing of God. I'm, hallelujah, I am Jesus' ambassador. I am Jesus' hallelujah. I am his voice. I am his hand. I am his feet. There's nothing he can ask me to do that I'm unwilling to do. Here I am, Lord. All I want to do is to be used of you. 
And when God begins to use you, you get new purpose. You get new anointing. You get new zeal. You get a reason for being on the pla- on planet Earth. It isn't to buy a house. It isn't to buy a car. It isn't to get a job that makes more money. But he called you to be a witness. He called you to be a preacher of the gospel. So the supreme task of the church is to evangelize our world. Amen? The job of the church is to take the gospel to the lost. Amen? It's our responsibility as children of God to take the gospel to people that may not even realize they're looking for it. The last instruction that Jesus gave to his followers were the most important of them all. His command was simply, go, go, go. Don't stay, but go. Hallelujah. The message hasn't changed. The call hasn't changed. The command hasn't changed. For Jesus said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever, and I change not. He said, baptizing them in the name. Aren't you glad you know what the name is today? He said, the name of the Father, and the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Aren't you glad you know what the name is? Jesus A name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. In Mark he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. It's important that we teach and we preach to so-called believers of our day that have never been baptized. They think they're all right. They think they're going to heaven. Yeah, I know some of you say you're pretty judgmental, Pastor. Well, I'm just preaching the book to you. Amen. There's a lot of good intention folks Today, that are living for God and all the knowledge that they know. But it doesn't change the fact that Jesus said, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter in to the kingdom of God. What is being born of the water? It's baptism. What is being born of the Spirit? Being filled with the Holy Ghost. There are a lot of people that that claim to be a believer in our world today, but they've never been baptized, and they've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And according to Scripture, they're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And it's up to you and I to take a stand on our job and to take a stand in our neighborhood and tell them there's more than what you've heard about. Amen. Peter got up and preached on the day of Pentecost. And they said to Peter, what shall we do to be saved? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands to him. And Luke recorded in chapter 24 and verse 7, 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name. Whose name? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. So the Great Commission is to spread 
and to plant and to cause the kingdom of God to increase. Hello. The Great Commission, God's great command is to spread and to plant and to cause the kingdom of God to increase. Through the spreading of the gospel or the spreading of the good news. What we got is good news. Hey man, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't want what we've got. So the Great Commission was good for Peter's day. It was good for Paul's day. And it's good for our day. The word hasn't changed. The commission hasn't changed. Amen. It's just as important today as it was back then. The church is called to reach souls. The church is called to reach souls. You've heard me say it time after time after time. If we stop reaching souls and if we stop being a soul winning station, then we cease to exist to be a church and we have no right to be a church if we aren't, hallelujah, if we are not doing the work of the kingdom of God. God has called us and God has placed us in Beltsville to reach the ten cities in our neighborhoods for the cause of the kingdom and by the help of God that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to sit down. We're not going to shut up. We're not going to fold our hands in Zion. But we're going to get a hold of the power of God. We're going to get it renewed in the presence of God. And we're going to go into the highways. And we're going to go into the byways. And we're going to compel them to come in. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life. And have it more abundantly. This world is looking for what you and I got. Hallelujah. I quit with this verse. Proverbs 11 and 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Hallelujah. He that winneth souls is wise. Hallelujah. 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 He that winneth souls is wise. So I kick off today, this first Sunday of October. And I've come to tell you that on November the 10th, we're going to have Friend Day. Hallelujah. And I am challenging this church this morning, not for any of you to come to church by yourself. Hallelujah. I am in challenging every believer. Amen. If you're a husband and wife, that means each of you, not collectively together. I'm challenging you. Find somebody to bring with you on November 10th to the house of God. Amen. Find somebody on your job. Find somebody in your neighborhood. Find somebody, hallelujah, that God has directed you to, to be a witness in a lighthouse too. If this church would invite, I know there's folks gone today, but if, there, if this, this, this church would invite one person each, we couldn't put them all in this building. Hallelujah. But God, I believe, is challenging us because the days are short and the trumpet is getting ready to sound and Jesus Christ is coming after a church. I don't know about you, but I want to be working in the kingdom of God. When Jesus comes, I don't want to be sitting back with my hands folded in my laurels, amen, but I want to be out into the kingdom doing the work of the kingdom. I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm trying to to tell somebody Jesus is coming Jesus is coming it's time to shake off some stuff in our life it's time to put some of the junk that we're involved in on the sidelines and it's time to submit ourselves to the voice of the spirit this morning I feel the Holy Ghost in here God is wooing us God is drawing us and God is saying come unto me come unto me come unto me I'll make you fishers of men I'll make you fishers of men Hallelujah. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me. Come on, stand to your feet. Clap your hands this morning. Come on, clap your hands. I need him today. So I'm asking you 
as they begin to play, if you'll step out from where you're at and you'll come down to this altar and say, God, here am I. You may not know what it is you can do for the kingdom, but if you're willing to be used in the kingdom, will you come down and submit yourself and say, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I surrender today. Come on. Come on. Let the Holy Ghost flow in this place right now, God. Let your anointing bring, hallelujah, conviction upon our hearts. Draw us nigh unto you, God. Help me today to lay aside every weight and sin. Help me to draw closer to you. Use me for your kingdom. Use me for your kingdom. If you want to be used today, come on down front. Amen. Hallelujah. Staff, if you'll come and lay hands on somebody, pray with these that have come. Father, bless my brother today. Bless my sister today. In the name of Jesus.
lift your hands, lift your voices, let's just give God some praise. I love you today, Lord. I praise you today, Lord. I submit to you, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do. Hallelujah. Not my will, but thine be done. Hallelujah. Father, let the blessing of the Lord be upon your people. Lead them and guide them and direct them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.